And we're gonna spray this area down with some brake cleaner. I don't feel so good. What's up guys? Got this late model 846 here. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. Today we're going to be removing the intake manifold and replacing the heater hose inlet and outlet pipes. In this video we're also going to be replacing the oil filter housing gasket because this is also leaking where it mates to the block. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit drinking. And a few components for the PCV system as well. So some symptoms of these coolant pipes up under the manifold going bad would be obviously a loss of coolant. As you can see in this video, this one's leaking pretty bad. These pipes are made of plastic and over time, the constant heat cycling of the engine will cause them to fail. So how I found this leak was I filled the system with water, put a pressure tester on it, and pressurized the system to about 10 PSI and I saw it pouring out from up under the engine block there. On these B30 engines specifically, when you remove the intake manifold, it's a really good time to replace the PCV system hoses. Um, as you can see, this one runs directly up under the manifold there. Pretty much all of your PCV components are up under the manifold there. Typical annoying BMW design, but... Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. First thing you're gonna wanna do is come disconnect your battery. We're gonna start by removing our airbox assembly. I already got this clamp loose. Just disconnect your MAF here. Take your two 10 millimeter bolts out here. And you got your plastic clips that hold it into the body there. Airbox out of the way. Now there should be a bolt that holds this harness here to the bracket, but someone's been in here before and this bolt is missing, but you can see it where it should be right there so you're going to want to pull that bolt out next next we're going to come up here move our harness from up here and pop these clips loose now there should be bolts that hold this cabin filter holder in place but this one is actually missing them there's one two three four I think they're usually a T30. Move this cover. See there's a hose up under here with two push tabs on the sides. So you're going to want to get on those push tabs and push back on the hose to get it up off that connection there. Set a needle nose should do it. If you're real careful, you shouldn't have any problems. There it goes. You have another smaller hose right there that you're gonna have to disconnect as well. So on this hose, it was hard to to picture. You kind of you kind of have to push in on the hose, and then get a pick up in here and lift up on this tab that is right in that keyway there, because this hose has an internal locking mechanism. It's kind of really annoying, but. Yeah, then that hose comes out. Next, we're gonna lift up on this connector, get this out of the way, do the same with this one. Just get those wires out of the way. You can leave them plugged in. Same with these oxygen sensor connectors. Just route them all over this way, get them up out of the way. Now I'm gonna remove these T25s down here and lift up this air pipe up out of the way. Gonna take some silicone spray. There we go. Finally got it loose. I just sprayed some more spray down in there. It was stuck up on the O-ring. You can see where the other end of this smaller pipe connects to. Those two hoses out of the way. While you're over here, might as well disconnect this connector. Move that out of the way. So to get some more room, when removing this, you can take out this partition here. It's just a 10 millimeter bolt and then it pulls right out.
There is a, there's a nut for a support bracket on the manifold. Now you do have to pull out the throttle body to get to that. Also, there's some vacuum lines back here that you need to disconnect. There's two of them. And another bracket there with a harness on it. Here's a better look of up under the intake, the stuff you gotta disconnect. You got a EVAP line right here. This runs to your oil dipstick tube. This is a vent. You've got a line right here. This is for your purge valve. You got a connector right here for your idle air control valve. You have this connector here for the purge valve. And all this all this stuff comes on this bracket here. And you can see this bra this bracket has a mounting point right here. There's a 10 millimeter nut and over here as well. You got a vacuum line right here. This vacuum line runs to this vacuum canister and goes up on the back of the intake manifold. Let's see, what else? You got this. Uh, this is a knock sensor interconnect. This clips, this is your mount here for the support bracket on the bottom of the intake. And this clips in to the support bracket. There's a, there's a metal clip in there that this clips into. And you also got another bracket here. This goes on the back side of the intake manifold. Mounts with two bolts there. This holds your fuel line and a wiring harness. You could either pop off the wiring harness and the fuel line or undo the two bolts for that bracket. But yeah, that's that's about it. Not not too much to this, honestly. And then you obviously you got your battery cable here. Now we're gonna come down here and loosen our bolt for the dipstick tube. I believe that's a 13 millimeter. There we go. Now you could just move this out of the way. You don't need to remove it. You just want some more space. I'm gonna slip this battery cable clip up out of place. I'm gonna come over here, lift the cover, and we're gonna take this nut loose down here. Now make sure your battery's disconnected before doing this, but it should already be disconnected. I'm just gonna place that nut back up on there, and now we'll be able to snake this through when we pull the manifold off. Come up here to the booster. There you go, and just pull it up out of the booster. Now if you can, it helps to have some compressed air and spray it around all these intake manifold bolts and get all this, see there's some sand trapped in here and stuff. We just don't want all this stuff falling into the engine once the manifold's out of place, so. If you have an air compressor with a blowgun or if you just have a, a small can of compressed air, you can just spray out all those areas, make it a little bit cleaner. have to take this fuel injector harness loose as well so you can see it's kind of hard really hard to see but you have these clips on the connectors now that I got it loose you can see a little bit better what I'm talking about so I slipped this shoulder off and you see how it kind of just locks down into this detent here that way you don't have to remove the clip entirely so I'll show you with this one so you just take this shoulder here, just guide it on down. <laughs> now it's not doing it, but there you go. Just guide it on down, and once you're about there, you have enough tension released on this side of the connector to just pull back, and it's no longer locked into the locking tab on the injector, so it makes it a lot easier to remove, and then you don't have to worry about losing the clip most of the time, but still keep an eye on the clips. And then once you get this completely out since these are designed to just snap in place when you put them back together. Just make sure you slip them back into that locking position. That way they don't fall off when you're moving around on this harness here. And that way you don't lose any of them. So surprisingly this one has them all because this thing is missing a lot of bolts and stuff. Now for the fuel rail you can either 
disconnect the fuel line back here, which is a quick release line, or you can unbolt the 10 mils here, pull the rail and the injectors out, or just pull the rail off, whichever, whichever is easiest. Sometimes they slip out of the manifold, other times they slip out of the rail. I think I'm going to leave this in place and disconnect the fuel line back here. And okay, that fuel rail is now disconnected back there. Now I'll show you guys when I get the manifold off, but on that fuel rail line, um, it's a quick release. So you push in on the line towards the fuel rail, and then there's a plastic collar. You pull down on that and then pull back and it slips right off. It's pretty easy to disconnect. And unless you plan on changing the injector O-rings, I wouldn't recommend removing the fuel rail. So it's an easy way around that. Now, since this intake is out of the way, now you can see this fuel line like I was trying to explain. You see this plastic ring here? So you push forward, pull forward on the hose with one hand, then take your thumb and index finger and pull back on this quick release coupling and then slide backwards and you're disconnected. Now we can start loosening up our manifold bolts. Now you have one here, one here, then you got two here, one here, two here, one here, and one there. And make sure you kind of loosen them up evenly. So start with this one, then go to that one, then there, then there, and so on. Just so you're releasing this manifold with even tension. Also going to remove these two 13 mils for the power steering reservoir and just move that out of the way so I have a little bit more room to work with here. There we go. So now with that out of the way, there we go. We are now loose and you're going to want to route this battery cable down through the manifold. Be careful you're not snagging up here. There we go. And we are out. One thing I noticed as soon as taking this loose is that these O-rings for the intake are, some of them are broken. And I don't think that happened right now pulling this out because it looks like they've been like that for a while. And now look at all the room we have for activities. Now the reason why this one is here today is because this pipe you can see it right there, it's split. And this thing would not hold coolant at all with the, well it would until you started running the engine, but that is why we are here today. Looks like we got a lot of cleaning up to do as well. As usual, we're gonna come up here, stuff some rags down in the intake so that we don't drop anything down into the engine. Now to get these pipes off, we're going to come over here on this heater hose, lift up the locking tab on the connector. There we go. Make sure you have a catch cam ready to catch that coolant. You got another one down here as well. Next, we're gonna take off this 13 mil for this upper pipe here, and this one for the lower pipe there. Cut the zip tie. Next, we're gonna take off this oil line connection. It's a 19 millimeter. Make sure you have a catch pan ready up under to catch the engine oil. Gonna come out. Not much came out. Next, take off the 10 millimeter 
on this other side of the pipe connection there. And with that nut removed, this pipe just slides right out. So part of this hose is actually missing. It is stuck up inside the engine right there. I don't know how well you can see it, but that is going to be a fun time to fish out and clean out. So I'm just going to get a pick here and try and fish out the rest of this hose. This is tricky because you do not want to knock this into the engine. So I'm trying to be very careful. Here's our O-ring. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do here, since this isn't pulling out easily, is I'm trying to create a crack in the plastic that's in there. And also I'm trying not to scrape the um, aluminum here, but hoping if I crack the pipe, it'll start to come out. So the last thing you want to do is knock this remainder of the pipe into the engine there. I was trying to pull on it and it was not coming out. So what I did was I took this pick here and since this plastic is so soft, I just created a crack in the pipe. And now that there's a crack in the pipe, I'm able to kind of fish it out because it's broken and lost its tension. So I just got the remainder of the pipe out and you can see where I cracked it right there to try and break it up and that, that seemed to work. Now there is some residue still up in there and stuff, but I'll get to that in a second. So now that I got most of the plastic up out of the hole, I'm trying to clean up the remainder of what's in here so that I can't feel anything rough with my fingers anymore, no burnt plastic or rubber or anything like that. So I got some pretty fine sandpaper here. This is thousand grit sandpaper and I just wrapped it around a socket and all I'm doing is going slowly back and forth and trying to work those areas where I can still feel something up in that hole. You want to make sure you get this hole as clean as possible because the o-ring has to seat on a clean smooth surface and if you don't get this right and you're gonna be pulling the manifold off again to fix it so take your time do it right the first time make sure this hole is smooth and cleaned out. If you can run your finger in there, and you don't feel anything catching, then you're probably good. So I'm just going back in the areas where it's a little bit caked on and taking a flathead screwdriver and just carefully chipping off the material. Now that it's starting to feel pretty smooth with my finger, I'm going to take this thousand grit sandpaper and run it over again just to make sure it's all nice and smooth and even. So we've got one more 13 mil down here holding this lower pipe on. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And hopefully, now this wasn't the pipe that was leaking so hopefully when we pull this one out it's not broken as well but <laughs> We don't get that lucky, so. The zip tie here for this knock sensor. And now you can see that this pipe is indeed broken as well. So we get to have more fun. Just gonna use the same method as the last one. I'm gonna crack this pipe if I can. Yeah, this one's actually a little bit stronger, so it's not wanting to crack as easy. Basically got a bigger pick here, and uh, since this pipe isn't wanting to crack as easy, I'm just going to use some leverage there. There, there it goes. Now it should come out a lot easier. Back to our small pick. There we go. Now I got all the big pieces out. Now I'm going to do the same thing and clean up this hole. Get all that old dried coolant, o-ring material, and everything out of there. Thankfully, good thing about this one is it's a little bit easier to access, so not as hard to clean out the hole. Didn't take as long. But also make sure to wipe out this hole after you run the sandpaper through it, because 
you don't want that old sandpaper material in there. Now we're gonna spray this area down with some brake cleaner. Now I've got the new coolant pipes here, and you can see compared to the old ones, these things are these things are cooked. So that's what I was trying to fish out was this. See where it broke off? I was trying to fish out this portion here. So before installing these, you're gonna to wanna to lubricate the O-rings a little bit. I got some silicone lubricant here. You just want something that's safe for rubber. And silicone lubricant is probably one of the safest things you can use on rubber. Now we're gonna put this lower pipe in first. Make sure you have your harness routed where you want it and everything. go slide those in there line up these mounting holes get your bolts These hoses have a stop on them, so you know when they're fully seated. There's a tab up there that mates with the block when it's fully seated. Coolant pipes are installed. Now I just need to do the oil filter housing gaskets, and then I'll finish cleaning all this up, and we will be ready to, well, almost ready to go. Still got a few other things to do. Now, for this oil filter housing, the manifold does not have to be removed to replace this, but it's a good time to do it if you are removing the manifold anyways. That's why we are doing it now, so. Because this is definitely leaking. We were already aware of this, so it was ordered with the pipes there, so. Just gonna break this filter loose. This is going to allow the oil and the housing to drain back into the pan, which is going to equate to less of a mess when we take this loose. Lift the cap off there, let the oil and that housing drain back down into the pan. I've disconnected this pressure switch back here. Disconnect this temperature switch. We already have our power steering reservoir out of the way. So let's pull it out of the way a little bit more. Move our purge valve too. Now we're gonna have to take this alternator loose and then I think we're pretty much good to go after that. We'll loosen up our tensioner on the belt and I'm gonna slip it off whichever pull is easiest. Which is gonna be this idler up here. There we go, let that swing back. Hopefully we can get our ratchet back. There we go. Now we're gonna loosen up this idler pulley. So up our idler pulley bolt is at 16 millimeter. Now you could take this upper radiator hose out of the way too, but I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna run the risk of breaking it since it's plastic as well. Since we're disconnecting this alternator, okay. Now, this alternator is feeling like it's loose, almost like it's missing the bottom bolt, which I would not be surprised if it is. We got our idler up out of the way. And if you were doing this with the manifold on, you'd have to pull this fan and stuff out of the way, but I'm not messing with that if I don't have to, so set the idler somewhere safe. Okay. 
and yeah this feels pretty loose I don't know if this lower does not feel like the lower mounting bolt is in for this alternator or at least it's not tight at all okay yeah it's in there it's just not tight so I'm gonna get on that lower mounting bolt for the alternator and then pull the alternator out of the way that lower mounting bolt is also a 16 millimeter oh yeah that's loose Okay, so long story short, I decided to take the power steering pump off as well. And now I'm going to pull this housing out completely so that I can clean it up a little bit better. Get this power steering pump off. You got two 13 mil bolts that bolt it to that oil filter housing. And then you have one 13 mil for this bracket in the back that you take off. And then the pump just drops right out. I also have this mounting point taped off so that when I'm scrubbing down here, I don't get anything into the engine. I'm just using this brush here and I have a degreaser that I soak this down with to kind of help break up all this sludge. guys so it's the next day here I cleaned off the engine block last night obviously got our pipes replaced now I also pressure wash this oil filter housing some of that is just staining but came out pretty clean with the pressure washer now we're going to replace a gasket on it and this gasket is rock hard no wonder it was leaking yeah this gasket is hard as a rock Coming off in pieces. Trying to do this slowly so I don't get any plastic down into the housing there. Alright, now we're going to clean out this channel a little bit. Brand new gasket. See, this one is nice and flexible and rubber still. The other one felt like it was hard as plastic. There we go, new gasket in place. We're gonna come over here and remove our tape. I'm also gonna clean up this mounting surface here real quick, make sure there's no tape residue or any dirt or anything on it. Just got some brake cleaner on a rag here. This FCP kit actually came with brand new bolts, so we're gonna put some brand new bolts in there with our filter housing. That is all nice and clean with a new gasket in it. Just gonna set these down here. We're gonna guide this down. So there's two dowel pins. There's one, this one's stuck in the filter housing here, and then there's one down in the engine block. Just make sure your gasket doesn't fall out as you're putting this on there. Very carefully gonna line this up. There we go. So you have two, you have three different size bolts here. So the shortest bolts go here, this top right one, this one here, that one there, and this one down here. Those are all the same size. So those go in there. Then you got super long one and one that's probably about 75 percent as long as that one the longest one goes in the top and then second longest goes down here so as you put them all in if you're unsure you should have you know about the same amount sticking out for each one once they're all placed in their place 
So that's how you know that you're right and you can start tightening them down. As always, make sure you start them all by hand before you switch to a power tool. We're just gonna snug them up right now. We're not tightening them down all the way. And do this evenly. Just until they start to seat. Go back around, seat them all again. There we go. Now we can torque them. The torque specs for these bolts are 22 newton meters. That's about 16.2 foot pounds. Always double check after torquing the first time because then the load is distributed over the housing. Also I kind of have ABD, ADD so always have to double check. And for peace of mind I'm going to mark these all now that they're torqued because I tend to forget what's been torqued and what hasn't. So this is a surefire way for me to remember that I have torqued these. Now I left these sensors in place so that when I was cleaning this off, didn't really matter if these sensors got damaged because I do have replacement sensors. So now that this is back on the vehicle, I'm going to remove these sensors now and replace them with the new ones in the kit. This first sensor is a 24 millimeter. There's our new sensor, make sure it has a crush washer on it, which it does. Just gonna snug it down for now. This oil temperature sensor is a 22 millimeter. There's our new one, make sure it's got a ceiling washer on it, and it does. Put it in there and snug it down. Now we're gonna torque these sensors. The torque spec for both the oil pressure and oil temperature sensor is 20 foot-pounds. There we go. Mark these with some paint. Those have been torqued. We've also got a new oil line that runs from this Vanos to the filter housing, so we're gonna replace that as well. I'm gonna replace some rags down here so that oil doesn't leak everywhere when we pop this loose. To get this loose without pulling this radiator hose, I'm gonna use a crow's foot. Get up on it and we are gonna have to go backwards, so. There we go. Crack it loose. Now we can pull our bolts out. Hopefully. Without dropping this line completely out. So we were able to get that out without pulling anything else out of the way. Gonna clean off our ceiling surfaces here. Our kit also came with new banjo bolts and new washers, so we're going to use those as well. Put a new washer on, come over here. This longer side of this hose with the curve in it goes towards the bottom. This one goes towards the top. 
Set this aside. Here we go. Make sure you put your second washer on there. And then as always, we're gonna hand tighten this first. Make sure it goes in nice and easy. There we go. Just doing this hand tight for now. Get our second banjo bolt. New washer. There we go. Don't forget that second washer. There we go. Now make sure you get this routed somewhere where you want it. Obviously you don't want this line over here where the metal's rubbing on our brand new heater pipe. So I'm gonna keep it right about there and torque it down in that location. Torque spec for these banjo bolts is 24 foot-pounds. Remember to hold this line in place as you torque it because you don't want it moving or it's rubbing on something, so. There we go, we're torqued. I'm gonna mark these bolts. So that's it for the oil filter housing. That's been replaced, we replaced the sensors, the lines. Now we can put our power steering pump back on and then our alternator and then our belt. We can get to our Torx bit bolts for this crankcase vent valve, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna make sure our parts are right for that. Which looks correct. Got our hoses in here. So we're gonna loosen up these two, I believe they're T25s. So back to our saga of missing components on this E46. There was a missing vacuum line down for this vacuum canister. Now this side runs to the back of the manifold here. So what I usually do is prop this intake up like this and then we can feed up the battery cable up and through. Now I can come over here, watch our harness back here, make sure that's not getting uh, messed up or pinched or anything. There we go. 
keep an eye on the gaskets, make sure they're not popping up out of there. They should, they should stay in there though. You should be good. Now, up over here, we got to watch down here for the support bracket. If you can see right there, the support bracket is stuck on the stud. I got to bring that down and over and also watch that knock sensor connector down there. Don't want to crush that. There we go. Now we're on the stud. At least starting to be on the stud. While this is still loose, I'm going to come down here and try and connect this EVAP line to our CCV. You should hear it clip when it connects. They can be quite a pain when they're brand new, but if you're ever unsure if it's fully seated, you shouldn't be able to tug down on it, which this one is now fully seated because I can no longer pull it up out of there. Now, I'm going to also come down here and get that knock sensor connector in place. Also going to go ahead and connect this now. There we go. Popped in place. Make sure our fuel line is free. Back here. Yeah, and that is tucked up under the intake, so I gotta pull that out. Somehow it got wedged up under this battery cable. There we go. Okay. Come down here and check our support bracket. Where are we at? Okay, so we're off the support again, which means I gotta tilt this up. There we go. Come up here and check our gaskets again. Looks like they're all in place. So, I knew I was lined up, but I was having an issue with these collars for the studs getting stuck. So I couldn't seat the intake down. So what I did was take a socket with an extension and just kind of give them a light tap and that helped to seat them, so. Now the intake is mating with the cylinder head like it's supposed to. Sometimes all it takes is a little bit of persuasion. So I just seated all of these just to get them set. Now I'm gonna come down here and set this, put the support bracket nut on, tighten that one down, and then torque all these to spec. Torque specs for these is 132 inch pounds or 11 foot pounds. After getting the intake back together, fixing that coolant leak, um, noticed the engine was running real rough. It was misfiring on all cylinders. I rechecked what I could with the intake still on to make sure I didn't leave any hoses loose or anything, which I didn't. So I decided, finally decided to cut my losses and pull the intake back off. So when I pulled the intake back off, I didn't see anything wrong with the gaskets. I wanted to make sure I didn't roll these gaskets or they didn't fall out of place or something and get them pinched. 
um, rechecked that all my PCV hoses were seated, and they were. Didn't see anything wrong. Checked for leaks on the diesel valve, checked for leaks on the idle air control valve. Everything looked good. So I decided to give the customer a call and ask them the exact details on this rough running condition. Apparently they had filled up with gas somewhere, and ever since they filled up at that one spot, was running rough. So that was more detailed information led me to taking a fuel sample and this is what I found. So in the fuel sample you can see I have some good fuel right here compared to the, the bad fuel that pulled from the car. So after letting this sit for a while you can even see the water start to settle in the bottom of the, the glass there. So this thing definitely has some bad gas in it. So we're gonna start there, we're gonna drain the drain the tank and uh, fill it up with fresh gas. Obviously put the intake back on the car and go from there and see see how she runs. So how I'm gonna do this is I've got a container here connected to the fuel line and I'm going to turn the pump on with my scan tool, fill this container up, dump the fuel into my, into my used oil container and uh, then dispose of the fuel afterwards. But this is where we're at, so let's get to it. So I got the scanner here connected to the car and all I'm going to do is actuate the fuel pump, watch until this bottle fills up, dump the fuel, and redo it. And I also got a charger connected to the battery to make sure I'm not running the battery too low. And I got fuel flowing into there right now, so as that fills up, I'm going to dump it and continue the process until I get, I'm estimating about 12 gallons are left in the tank, so. So we've gone from about three quarter tank to around half a tank already, and that's with uh, basically two gallons pulled out of it, so we're making progress. So I just got back from getting rid of this bad gas. Now we can clean up these intake ports again, and throw the intake back on and see where we're at. Also gotta fill this thing with gas. We'll get there. So, update on this E46 from hell. Now, it's not the car's fault. <laughs> let's, let's get that straight forward. I drained the bad gas from this thing. Now, I pulled another fuel sample because when I started this up after putting new gas in it, the car was still running like complete garbage. So I verified there's no more water in this tank. This gas has been sitting in this bottle overnight. If there was any water, it would have settled at the bottom like the old one. Now, Decided to check engine compression. Engine compression was decent. It's not perfect. It's not perfectly within the specs, but it's it's good enough to where this engine should be running decent. I mean, it should be running good. It's it's an old engine, has about almost 200,000 miles on it, so you know, it's not gonna be completely within spec. So, decided to check fuel pressure. Fuel pressure was perfect. Check that all the injectors were firing. Check that all the coils were firing. Everything was good. The plugs are brand new. Um, from like a month ago, I put the plugs in this thing. So, I decided to run a smoke test. Now, when I was running the smoke test, I was getting smoke from up under the intake. So, I decided to remove the throttle body so I can get a better view up under everything. Took the throttle body off, removed this wire and harness. It the smoke looked like it was coming from the, the brand new CCV, mind you. This, this part was brand new. So, I checked, made sure all the hoses were seated. Um, before I had installed the CCV, the CCV brand new one comes in this clamshell here. It's like a sound insulator. Now, before I installed this CCV, I checked to make sure that this rubber nipple was installed because this car does not need this vacuum line attached to the CCV. So rubber nipple was installed. So I decided to pull the CCV off so I can get a better look at it. And I was gonna pressure test it with the, uh, the CCV in my hand basically. So but I didn't need to do that. So when I pulled it off, pulled the sound insulator completely off and started inspecting it, this is what I found. There's a plug missing from this brand new CCV. So this was causing an intake leak. Now, this part is brand new. <laughs> um, here's the old one for reference. As you can see, there should be a plug in there. So how I'm going to, how I'm going to fix this is I'm going to, I've already removed the check valve from this one and I'm going to swap the check valve from this one onto the old one and install this back on the, up under the intake. And this will fix, I'm 99% I'm certain this is the last issue I have with this car. This car has had a, com a comedic amount of issues all 
somewhat related to each other, but uh, I believe I have narrowed down the last of these issues. And what led me to running another smoke test, even after replacing all these, uh, all the gaskets up under the intake, all the hoses have been replaced and everything, was I was looking at the live data and I had misfires on all cylinders. My long-term fuel trims were pegged at 12%. Now that usually indicates that the, the computer is asking for 12%, 12 more fuel uh, from the O2 sensor readings, basically. It's getting unmetered air somewhere and it's asking for more fuel. So usually that would indicate an intake leak. And I ruled out everything I could without the smoke machine. And this is something that, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how common this would be. I, I've never ran into this before where there's a, literally a molded piece missing from this CCB. So buyer beware. All right, moment of truth. And this car is fixed, finally. Look at that. What a pain in the ass, man. So still gotta button up some stuff, but this car is 100% fixed now.